And to be honest with you, I really couldn't believe that I found these on eBay. These are worth a lot of money. In the right circles, the right auction house, these can probably go for 10 or 15 times what I paid for it. These are extremely scarce. Most people don't even know what these are and walk by them all the time. I've got a bunch here we're gonna show you. These are the sorts of things that can sell for hundreds of dollars if you know what you are looking for. Hey, it's Don. Today I wanted to talk about something that most people miss. Most people don't even know what they are. Even if they saw these, most of the time, people aren't going to realize what you're even looking at. Now, these were purchased from eBay by me for almost nothing. I've been selling dye, dye stampers, steel types of material like this for many, many years. We've done very, very well with these sorts of things. There are a few that I actually keep and collect, and these happen to be them because these are probably the rarest of what I would run into at any given time. And just to find them on eBay for 15 bucks a piece was phenomenal to me. Now, what these are are steel die stamps to make, this one here makes actually buttons for a company called Rex Cole. Now, let me show you what they actually made. They made this button right here. Now this is actually an original from the 1920s, the same time frame as these, and not only is it an original one, but it actually locks into the actual die itself. So this one was stamped either off of this die or it's identical twins. So these match, they're from the same era, the same time frame, and the whole works. Now some cases, buttons like this, the molds may not be the same. One company may make a different design. There may be two or three designs for the same company as well, depending on the maker, the style, the button, the whole works. Now, these are just button ones here, but I buy and find these for all sorts of different things. If I took this to a high-end auction with the original button that would have been printed in it or stamped out of it right here, these might get me two two fifty right off the bat, especially if I tie in the fact that Rex Cole worked with General Electric. They did some refrigerator work, some... Uh, electronic things. They were involved in some department stores. There's even some drugstore tie-ins with Rex Cole. Some of the buildings that Rex Cole may have owned may have had doormen, security guards that wore those uniform buttons there. This is the key though. These stamp, these die stamp items here are extremely scarce. If you just saw it sitting on a shelf, you may not think a single solitary thing of it. Now why would this be rare like that as well? This is from the 20s. During World War II, a lot of these sorts of things, if the business didn't use them anymore, they were scrapped for the war effort, turned in for the steel to make tanks or whatever the heck they would have needed to make out of them at that point. So a large number of these were scrapped at the warehouses. Now too, in the 70s and 80s and beyond, they stopped making specific buttons like this. There are very few companies that actually have uniform buttons other than train and transportation these days. Police, obviously, but law enforcement and military, but the private individual company, it's very seldom to run into these. These are extremely scarce to have both parts. I've run into and have some single parts, but you need two to stamp out the brass itself. You need the top and the bottom part to stamp the actual metal design into it. Now I've been into buttons too for like 25 years, so I'm actually working on a book. These are going to be in that book because they're that scarce. There's something you're just not going to run into. Now, I do run into dyes quite often, quite often. Dyes are not scarce. They're not super, super rare. Here's a box that weighs about 50 pounds worth of dyes right here. It's, it's very heavy, I will have to say. Now, these are the type of dyes that I usually run into. It'll have a name or Let's see here, a little shield, Knights of Columbus, this one is. It's a solid chunk of steel. Many times with these sorts of things, they'll just grind down the front and reuse these. So they would have been reused possibly at the factory that made these types of things. This one's for a jewelry pin, like a little membership pin is what this one's for. These routinely get me 100 bucks, and it's only half of them. Sold them as low as 75, I sold them as high as 175. I think we've even sold a few higher than that, depending on it. We had some Hunt Club pins that they went for some phenomenal money. Now, I bought these from somebody else. They had $8.50 on them price-wise. 
I got them for like five or six bucks, I think, at the most. And we, again, have been selling them. Here's an example of one that we just sold. This one sold for $100. Now, when I bought these, I bought them. I sold a couple immediately, and I paid for the entire lot. I've got about maybe five or six bucks in each one of these that I bought, and I'm selling them on average 75 to 175 so it doesn't take long to get some money back, but these are the exact same things basically as the button one. These are just made to stamp thicker items out of such as jewelry or this pin that was a giveaway from the Toledo Blade newspaper up here. Uh, it was a like a safety thing that they helped sponsor. It was usually kids that delivered the paper as well for them. And in Terrapeak, if you look in Terrapeak, you're going to see some for some very interesting things. These are uh, Chief Flight Surgeon Wings. Very interesting. This would be a surgeon on an airplane or something. 560 bucks. So there are some very unique ones out there. Here's a set of them from the, the World's Fair. You can see them for pretty much anything out there. The World's Fair, you can find them for probably hundreds of different things. Now, one interesting fact on in a lot of these during World War II and even before that, some of the die stamps were melted down for the war effort. So there's not a ton of these around. Like the button dies I showed you, it's the same basic principle. There's not many of those around. Many of those were used to actually uh, melt down and use for the war effort. So you won't find those. Or the steel-wise, sometimes you could grind them down and have another design engraved into the, the, the face of it and use it for a, a different design, a different button. Now with like Rex Cole, if you look up Rex Cole, pretty much every button, one of these is mine as well, every button that gets listed with a Rex Cole and it does sell, tie it to New York or to General Electric because they had some dealings with uh, refrigeration systems and electronic systems. Um, I've seen some items tied to some uh, drugstore items as well as like a, a soda fountain shop. So. Anybody in the building may have worn like a Rex Cole button for one of their own shops or stores. Uh, so again, there's a bunch of different things out there. If you look up Rex Cole, you'll see. That's why it's such an interesting thing to find rare things like die hubs and stampers on eBay to begin with. Because again, they're, they're, most people don't know what they are. It takes the right terminology. It takes the right person looking for the right words to find the specific thing like that. For me, digging into the history and being this much into buttons in this category, it's rare to find those sorts of things on eBay. If you haven't been on eBay very long, you can pretty much find anything, but some items only show up once every five or ten years on eBay. And these button molds, these button die stampers can be one of those items that almost never shows up because there aren't many of them around to begin with. We sold a couple right off the bat, and we made hundreds of dollars off those few that we sold and we paid almost nothing for them. These have been paid for for a very long time. They're not gonna be super quick movers, these sorts of things on eBay, but they sell, they sell extremely well. As long again, as you know what they are, what they're called and they're the right person's online. If you send these to the right auction, depending on what the design, what the stamp is for, they could go sky high. Like again, a button auction, which there are specific companies that just handle button-related material. Now, I'm actually hanging on to these for right now because it's something I never run into. The items you don't run into hardly ever, if at all, you find them. You usually want to hang on to them for a while and just see what happens with those. So these are something I could flip pretty much any day if I took them to a specialty auction just for vintage buttons. Believe it or not, there are buttons, just single shirt buttons that can sell for ten dollars or $15,000 if you have the right one. Even newer ones from designer shirts and things like that, like Chanel, can sell for hundreds of dollars, brand new ones, even ones from the 80s. Sometimes a dress or a piece of uh, clothing might be damaged, but the buttons on it may be worth 10 times what you could get out of the clothing itself by selling them as replacement parts. There's actually people that reproduce the buttons, they'll stamp out new ones from these actual dies and sell copies of them. So there's many different options and opportunities to do stuff with these. Again, it's extremely rare and I honestly couldn't believe that I saw them sitting on eBay for 15 bucks a piece for both halves, enough to at least stamp out the front of a button. So, so there's a ton of things out there that are worth a lot of money, but unless you know what they are, your chances are walking right by them and missing opportunities where you could make hundreds if not thousands of dollars like these die hubs right here.
But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Secret Sam's periscope. You see him, but he can see you. You locate the master spy. You talk to him. And Secret Sam's hidden camera is taking his picture right now. Suddenly you're discovered. Secret Sam fires bullets from inside the case. Secret Sam has barrel extension. Special missile sends message to your partner. Mission accomplished. You hand over real photograph. Secret Sam with periscope, message missile, rifle stock, barrel extension, even shoots through this carrying case and this real camera that works in secretly or out. Takes real photos. Secret Sam.